how are you going to top this? I'm not trying to top anything. I'm just trying to go to my round. I have a 200 left. I came out there and I, I was ready. I was getting perfect starts all this time, so I knew my start was together, so I had no worries. The career of a professional sprinter is often short-lived, and it's said that sprinters reach their peak before 30 years old, with the average age of Olympic sprinting champions reflecting this. Of the past 10 Olympic 100-meter champions, the average age was 24, with only one athlete winning while in his 30s. There have been some sprinters who have managed to run their personal best in their 30s and even prolong their career until 40, but for Usain Bolt, this wasn't the case. In this video, we'll be taking a look at Usain Bolt's career and ask why he never improved on his fastest times after the age of 22. Usain Bolt ran his fastest ever 200 meter race the day before he turned 23, with his fastest ever 100 meter race occurring four days prior. At this point of his career, Bolt had broken 100 and 200 world records in consecutive years and won gold at both the Olympics and World Championships. Almost immediately after he broke the world records in 2009, analysts were saying that he had the potential to run 9.4 and 18.9. So why did these expectations not materialize? Bolt said that he saw no reason to break the world records again after 2009 and said that his main goal was to win as many gold medals as possible to cement his legacy. But in interviews in the years afterwards, he also stated that he thought he could break the world records again. Saying that he could still break the world records is definitely a more effective way of building anticipation for a championship than saying it's out of reach because training has been going as well as in previous years, even if this might have been the case. This leads to the question of whether he truly had the same desire and motivation to push his body as hard as he did in 2008 and 2009, or if injuries may have hampered him along the way. Because he said, my training hasn't been as good this year as it was last year. Imagine when it is. He's going to continue to run faster and faster. He thinks he can run 9.4. He said that clearly about a week ago, but he does think 9.4 is the limit. I don't think so. I think he can go whatever time he wants. Can, can he break 19? Can he break it? Yeah. I don't see why not. Go home and work harder. I don't see why not. I mean, He's not even in his prime yet. I think he's capable of running under 19 seconds, as crazy as that sounds. You've already won the Olympic gold medals, you're world champion. What's the future going to be? Where's the motivation going to come from for you to be able to get through another five or six years of this? I have the work. There's no reason to break the world records again. If, if it goes, it goes. But for me, it's, it's always a championship. So if I can defend my, my titles, then that'd be good. Do you think you can ever get to my four? I'm hoping. <laughs> I'm definitely hoping. Uh, we're definitely going to work on it, give it my best. Uh, I think people would love to see that. I would love to see that also. So. You talked about going sub-19, which of course got my attention. <laughs> <laughs> um, something I always wanted yeah. to do, wasn't able to do. I always felt like you could do it. I think it's going to be a lot trickier than uh, now because of the little setbacks that I've had throughout the season. You never know what's going to happen, but I think I may be able to break the world record. But sub-19 sub is going to be really tricky to get to. Breaking down each year of Bolt's career can give us an insight into factors that led to the times he ran each season. Since there was no major championship in 2010, Bolt used this as an opportunity to give his body a break by entering far fewer races than in previous years. This led to him running season's best times of 9.82 and 19.56. Tyson Gay is you. Now he is your great rival. He's beaten you this year, am yeah, I right? Yeah. yeah. How do you yep. feel about that? Yep. Well, it's, it's, it's no stress. Uh, this year is not is not is not a championship year. This is my my year off. I would say, so it's it's no problem. Doesn't count. Yeah. For me, it doesn't really. In 2011, Bolt got disqualified for a false start in the 100 meter final at the World Championships, and his training partner Johan Blake won gold. Given Bolt's form that season, I think he would have ran 9.7 had he not false started. In his final race of the season, he ran 9.76 in Brussels, which was his fastest time that year. Bolt won gold in the 200 meters at the World Champs in a time of 19.40 and he looked disappointed as he crossed the finish line. This would suggest that he was aiming for a world record time, but when he is so far ahead of his competitors, it can lead to unintentional complacency since there is nobody there to push him all the way to the line. We both know when you get that competition and you know you have to push yourself, it's definitely going to be faster. This all changed in 2012 when Johan Blake beat Bolt in the Jamaican trials while Bolt was still struggling to regain his previous form. Bolt spoke about the motivation this gave him to push himself harder in training and in the space of just a month, Bolt managed to get back to the level of performance he first showed in 2008. At this Olympics, Bolt was 25 which is generally considered the prime age for a sprinter and with Blake hot on his heels in both events, Bolt won the 100m in a time of 9.63, 9.62 
and the 200 metres in a time of 19.32. In the 100, Bolt leaned too early which slowed him down slightly, but even with a perfectly timed dip, I don't think he was on world record pace given that his 80 metre split was slower than in 2009. In the 200, Bolt celebrated early and slowed down for his last few strides. Had he not done this, he could have run 19.29 to break the Olympic record. The world record, however, would have still been out of reach. In 2013, Blake was unable to compete at the World Champs due to injury, so Bolt wasn't under the same amount of pressure to perform as he was in 2012. In the 100 meter final, he beat Justin Gatlin convincingly in a time of 9.77, which was the slowest he had run in a championship final, but it was still an underrated performance given that the race was in the rain and into a slight headwind. In the 200 meter final, the result was a foregone conclusion and Bolt strolled home in his time of 19.66 while easing down before the line. After the 2013 season, I think it was apparent that the peak years of Bolt's athleticism were behind him and that his motivation to push himself in training may have been on the decline. There had even been some rumours that Bolt was going to retire after the 2012 Olympics to pursue a career in soccer, but he continued running track with the ambition of being the first man to win three Olympic gold medals in a row in the 100 and 200 metres. Since Bolt showed incredible natural talent from the age of 15, it begs the question of whether he was destined to be an early bloomer meaning more race experience beyond his early 20s led to more wear and tear on his body rather than it leading to him becoming physically fitter or finding a more effective technique. Su Bing Chan is an example of a late blooming sprinter who ran a huge personal best at age 31 after spending a decade working on perfecting his technique. Many analysts thought that the key to Bolt running 9.4 would be improving on his sprinting mechanics but since Bolt had scoliosis and one leg slightly shorter than the other it led to him needing to compensate by having longer ground contact times with one of his feet. This meant that changing his mechanics to follow an ideal model was not possible and it may have also meant that his condition was becoming an increasing hindrance to his athletic ability as the years went by. In 2014, Bolt only ran three races including relays and in 2015 he had an injury early in the season which delayed his training. With Gatlin in the best form of his career, it led to doubt about whether Bolt would be able to retain his title at the World Champs but he won the 100 meter final in a time of 9.79 and coasted to victory in the 200 meters in a time of 19.55. Going into the 2016 Olympics, Bolt spoke about his desire to break the 200 meter world record since it would be his last ever 200 meter race, but that seemed extremely ambitious given that he hadn't run under 19.5 in the previous three seasons. Bolt won the 100 meter final in a much more comfortable fashion than the previous year and even had time to celebrate before the finish line. He won the 200 meter final in a time of 19.76 and looked extremely disappointed with the time even though he had just become the first man to win three Olympic goals in a row at 100 and 200 meters. Despite not getting faster in his mid to late 20s as many hoped he would, Bolt still managed to run a 100 meter time which will likely remain untouchable for years to come given that no sprinter has been able to run 9.6 in the past decade. Bolt's 200 meter world record has also remained untouchable. But there is the perception that it's the more vulnerable record, especially with the level of talent competing in the event at the moment. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. I think the, the ones that were record will go over and over again, but I think the 200 is going to be hard to get to. So I think 200 will stay with me forever.